Welcome to another episode of Don Alfin on Fishing. Today we have a, a, a I have a treat for you. Um, basically, what we're going to be talking about are uh, are are how to catch burbot, and then and then in addition to that, we're going to show you how I fillet uh, burbot, how I process them, and then finally. Um, we're going to take you into the kitchen, and my wife Jerry is going to show you how to make uh, burbot ceviche. Well, I'll tell you what, I apologize for not showing this on film, uh, catching this, this uh, burbot, but this is a nice, uh, oh, probably 30, 31 inch burbot. Uh, but look what the burbot's been eating. He's been eating other burbot. Yep, it's a burbot. Perfect, great job. Hey, we're cooking with gas. Get that old live well going and and we're ready to go with a beautiful burbot. <laughs> they kind of... <laughs> there you go. Oh, you know what? I'm going to probably have to get some more bait from you. Very good. That was a really good bite. A good, good little burbot bite. I just switched to a, I call it a Colton Special. It's basically a Christensen tackle, a Lakeshore tackle, a Ned's bait box, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> He's got a beautiful selection of, 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 of burbot jigs, and this happens to be a pink one in about a half ounce uh, variety. And I've just got it tipped with a little bit of sucker meat, and uh, I've just dropped it down and had a nice bite. Now the only difference between how I jig for uh, burbot or lake trout this time of year is I do basically the same thing, except I make a, a more violent jerk up. And uh, I know there are people that purposely snag these lake trout when they come in to spawn. I, I, I don't like that at all. But what you have to understand is that Years ago, I learned when walleye fishing at Utah Lake, uh, I would throw my, my lure out hoping to get to a sandbar. And then what I would do is, and the, and the walleye I knew were coming into the sand uh, before they'd come into the rocks to actually spawn. And so I'd pull that jig across the, the uh, sandbar and I would make a jerking motion like I just did there. And, uh, and, and what would happen would be that the, the walleyes would react to the fact that something, or I just missed a fish right there. I don't know whether you noticed that, but the, the, the line did not go down and it, and, it, and it stayed up. And so I had a hit right there that I missed. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so uh, what I was doing is causing those walleye to just make a quick reaction and they'd hit that, that uh, red marabou jig. And so one, one night I had the, the DNR or the Division of Wildlife Resources, rather, I had a guy come out and, and, uh, and try to catch me, quote unquote, snagging walleye. So I was fishing at night, it was probably 9.30 at night, and this guy hit me with a spotlight as soon as I'd hooked the fish. And, uh, and he says, stop right there, he says, get that fish in, I want to see exactly how it's hooked. And he had a spotlight, and he came out and, and looked, and of course the fish was, was absolutely right in the mouth. And he had to eat a lot of crow that night because he was convinced that nobody could catch walleye when they're coming in to spawn that we're all trying to to uh, snag them so so what I'm doing here with this technique see normally if I was fishing for kokanee and 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 doing my kokanee jigging I would just be shaking the rod tip a little bit and then lifting it up like this and kind of in that motion but what I want to do down here now is I want to be more violent with that with that jerk up Okay, now I'm still not quite on the bottom, I'm a little tiny bit above the bottom, but still all I'm doing is, is presenting it down there and then, and then uh, when, when you know, I can, I can do this for a minute, uh, even 30 seconds or even uh, 5 seconds, and then I make a violent jerk up and then I watch that line going down. That's where I missed that last bite, is I got a reaction that stopped the lure going down, but I didn't react quick enough to get the fish. So that's the technique, and I learned it probably 45 years ago. So here I've got a nice burbot um, that I caught, and uh, this obviously is what came out of its stomach. So we're going to actually look at his stomach 
uh, eventually, but just bear with me here as I, as I show you what I do with the burbot. Um, you can take the skin off of burbot. I don't do that myself. I know this is a decent sized burbot, so there's going to be some meat right here uh, on the side of the rib cage, and um, there's going to be meat here on, the, on both sides of the tail. So all I'm going to do with this fish is, is uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with, the, with this part right here behind the tail. And I'm going to just go down to the backbone and take out that whole, that whole piece of, uh, of meat and skin. We'll just lay it aside there. Do the exact same thing on the other side, same exact spot. You can do this with any size burbot. Sometimes, obviously, the smaller burbot, you know, don't have quite as much, as much uh, meat as that. Now I'm just going to come right down the backbone, and and it's almost like handling any kind of game. I want to come across here, but I want to just kind of fillet against the rib cage and just use my knife on the rib cage no different than you would skinning a deer or an elk or or whatever and you're going to notice that I'm getting quite a little bit of meat uh, off of this side and uh, we'll just continue that down don't go too far down just uh, just down as as best I can just following that rib cage around and that's the next fillet that I get so see that's you know kind of twice the size almost of the of the other fillet I hope that you can see this we'll check it out and if you can't see it then it'll end up on the cutting room floor but so now I'm just gonna come in exactly like I did on the opposite side it's a little tiny bit tougher because Obviously, we don't have the bulk of the fish sitting there to give resistance, but once again, I'm just going to go right down to the rib cage and just work that around. And as soon as I get low enough that I feel like I've gotten as much of that as I can get, I'll just cut that off just exactly like I did before. And, uh, and that will be my fillet. Okay. Okay, there are the fillets. Now, the rest of the burbot, I'm not going to deal with, but I will cut it open because I'd like to kind of show you what is, uh, is potentially in the stomachs, the stomach of the burbot, because I always like to do that if I'm killing a fish. And amazingly, look at what is in the stomach. It is another burbot. So we've got two burbot in this big burbot stomach, and there's a third burbot in this burbot burbot stomach, and. That is what this burbot has been eating. So we should save all the burbot because they're eating themselves. Now I'm going to clean up my hands a little bit before I t t touch the fillets, so I'll be right back. Now that I'm back with you, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, finish the filleting. And, and all I do is come to the middle of the fillet, go just slide the knife right underneath the skin. Now I've got uh, special purpose for this. We're going to actually make uh, uh, burbot ceviche. So a lot of a lot of times people, I'll clean those up a little later. A lot of times people call this meat uh, poor man's lobster, and there are certainly wonderful ways to fix it. That uh, like that to boil it up and in uh, sprite and water and then use drawn butter on it, but these fillets are just beautiful. They're wonderful. Wonderful fillets. 
and the meat is sweet and and awesome not a problem whatsoever to to utilize this fish so now these are the these are the this is the backbone kind of like the loin steaks if you will and I do exactly the same thing just cut down through the middle of them and then I just take that and look at that piece of piece of meat now we will probably do a little little tiny bit of trimming before we make the burbot because there's one line of of bone uh, that's just rib bone that I didn't take out when I did the original fillet and then this one's probably going to have that bone again so we'll just turn it around go all the way back through and this time we're going to take that last bone just like that and we're going to work that work that down shortens up that fillet just a little bit there's one that I missed shortens that fillet up just a little bit but there it is come back to Don Offen on fishing now yesterday you got to 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 see me uh go ahead and fillet those that beautiful burbot that we have and now we're going to make uh, homemade ceviche uh, out of the burbot but in order to do this I want to introduce you to, to the better half of Don Offen on fishing and that's my wife Jerry who is uh the master cook of everything I catch so uh, I'm going to turn the time over to Jerry and she's going to explain what we're doing with uh, burbot ceviche. Hi and welcome. We make this a lot. We really enjoy it. It's great for appetizers, snacks, even for a salad. So we're starting with the burbot that you saw yesterday. I've cut it into bite-sized pieces and I've carefully removed all of the bones. When you cut this into pieces, think of a piece that would fit on a cracker or a taco chip. I've also added to my burbot um, chopped jalapeno. I have two chopped jalapenos. You can see they're chopped quite small. Don't worry about the heat. The lime juice and the salt that you put in this kind of tends to dissipate the heat a little bit. But if you want it hotter, add more. If you don't want it as hot, you can add less. This is about a pound of burbot. I have two chopped jalapenos. So to this, um, I've also added about a teaspoon of chopped garlic and stirred it all in. I'm going to pour lime juice, and this is real lime juice, not the bottled lime juice. Yep, there we go, real lime juice. And there's jalapeno. So I buy my limes in the bags from Walmart or Costco or Sam's Club, like 10 or 20 limes. I'll juice them and I freeze them so I always have lime, on, lime juice on hand. So I'm just going to cover this with the lime juice. Stir it well, add my salt to it, about a teaspoon of salt, one to two teaspoons. And then I'm going to cover that and put it in the fridge for about four hours. I can leave it overnight if I want to, but a minimum is going to be about four hours. And you'll know when the fish is done because it will turn white and it will be firm. So then part two of the ceviche recipe are the rest of the veggies. In here I have chopped red onion, I have chopped red bell pepper, and I have chopped tomato. I have about uh, maybe a quarter cup of the onion, about maybe a quarter to a half cup of the pepper, and then I have one chopped onion, or one chopped tomato. And again, think of bite-sized pieces. I'm also going to add lime juice to this and another teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to let that marinate while the fish is marinating. So we'll be back in about four or five hours to show you how to put this all together. Hi, welcome back. It's been about four hours later and our fish is done. You can tell because it's turned white and it's firmed up. It will firm up even more as the longer it sits in the solution. And we've left it in the solution for a week or two and it's been great. So there is our fish. And by the way, you can do this with any mild fish. We've done it with um, burbot. We've done it with lake trout. We've even done it with kokanee salmon. And uh, striped bass, right? And striped bass, exactly right. So any, any mild fish is terrific. So now that our fish is done, we're just going to add our veggies into the mixture and give that a good stir. And then last, we'll add fresh cilantro. We like fresh cilantro, so I have about a quarter cup chopped. If you don't like fresh, fresh cilantro, don't add it. If you like more, add more. 
I'm just going to stir this up. See how pretty it is? It's colorful. I don't know that the guys really care if it's that colorful or not, but their wives might. Their wives might. All right, we're ready to give this a try. Got my taco chip here. <laughs> mm. Mm. So good. You taste the lime. You taste the salt. You don't really taste the heat of the jalapenos. I guess you could put a lot in it if you wanted the heat. But it's just so refreshing and so good. So please, give it a try. Make your own ceviche.